The pathophysiology of uh, transplant-associated TMA is uh, complicated, uh, but it is felt uh, to uh, primarily be uh, involved with the damage to the microvascular endothelial cells, uh, particularly in end organs uh, such as the kidneys, uh, lungs, uh, GI tract, and uh, also the brain. Uh, it is a fairly common complication uh, after transplantation. Uh, it's been reported in the literature anywhere from uh, 5 to uh, almost 50 percent of patients, um, depending on which criteria is used for diagnosis. Um, the <clears throat> uh, endothelial injury uh, is uh, felt uh, to probably reflect a three-hit uh, uh, process where uh, some patients are probably predisposed to endothelial injury based on genetic predisposition, uh, particularly with uh, genetic mutations in complement uh, uh, proteins. Uh, so these patients, if they are genetically predisposed, uh, undergo transplant. Uh, the stress of the transplant uh, will uh, lead to uh, increased activation of complements, and complements are felt to be an important part of the endothelial injury. Um, so activation of complement uh, leads to uh, damage to endothelium uh, and the formation of microthrombi uh, in the endothelium, uh, which leads to uh, uh, end organ dysfunction. One of the biggest triggers of uh, uh, the endothelial injury uh, uh, is the medications used for GVHD, and this includes the conditioning regimen uh, and, importantly, the GVH prophylaxis medications. So uh, many, most allogeneic transplants uh, employ a calcineurin inhibitor, um, either uh, cyclosporin or tacrolimus, uh, and these drugs uh, are endothelial uh, uh, damaging agents. Um, uh, calcineurin inhibitors uh, have uh, pro-inflammatory as well as pro-thrombotic effects uh, on the endothelium. Uh, by promoting uh, you know, in, uh, in, uh, markers like, uh, 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 I'm sorry, by triggering uh, increased uh, production of thromboxane uh, and decreased production of nitric oxide or prostacyclin. So this leads to a milieu where uh, there is uh, increased uh, platelet act activation in the microvascular endothelium. So, so these drugs are uh, one of the bigger triggers uh, for TMA after transplantation. Uh, and the withdrawal of these medications is often thought to be the first step uh, in the treatment of this condition. As I mentioned earlier, uh, TMA is felt to be mediated in, 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 in large part by uh, complement activation, uh, and uh, MAS2 uh, is a, a protein, uh, it's a serine protease that's uh, important in initiating the lectin uh, pathway uh, for uh, complement uh, activation. Uh, and in patients who have uh, uh, who had received the uh, high-dose chemotherapy after autologous transplant, there are high levels of MAS2 uh, in the blood for the first month after a transplant. Uh, and even in allogeneic transplantation, uh, uh, patients uh, have uh, high levels of MAS2. So it's possible that the MAS2 uh, uh, levels are mediating uh, uh, increased complement activation uh, in these patients and therefore uh, predispose them to uh, TMA. Uh, the Current uh, drugs available for treating TMA, uh, are, there are, first of all, there are no FDA approved drugs, um, but uh, one drug that's been used uh, is ecolizumab, which is an uh, uh, antibody against C5, uh, which is the terminal uh, MAC attack complex of the complement cascade. Uh, and so that drug has uh, shown some e efficacy based on uh, published literature. Um, MAS2 uh, is much higher up in the, uh, the complement cascade uh, because it doesn't attack the alternative uh, pathway, but the lectin pathway. And so uh, if uh, blocking MAS2 uh, is active, uh, it, may, uh, it may also be a valuable uh, treatment in this disease uh, without, uh, uh, without interfering with the classical cascade uh, and possibly sparing the uh, risk of infection.